Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm an artist, an animal lover, and the founder of Wildlife Drawing. Today we're on Spitalfield City Farm, one of my favourite places in London. And I'm going to be teaching you how to draw the donkeys. <laughs> donkeys are one of my favourite animals, full of personality and character. And they've got these lovely big soulful eyes and they just look really kind. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to draw these donkeys and we're going to be using pencil. It's suitable for everybody, all abilities, so we can all get involved. So I'm here with Emma, she's one of the farmers here. Emma, who have we got here today? Hi Jenny, so um, oldest donkey, Bayleaf, he turned 25 this year. Mm -hmm. Then we've got his best friend Derek, who is 16. And then we've got the two miniature Mediterranean donkeys, Gilbert and Sullivan. What I love most about donkeys are the giant ears that <laughs> yeah. they have. Do they have really good hearing? They do. They can certainly hear feed being opened and the gates coming <laughs> um, open. Uh, they definitely know when something good's happening. And they can really kind of manoeuvre their ears as well, can't they? Does the position of their ears mean that they're in a different mood or you can tell their mood from their ears? Uh, you can sometimes. So if they're definitely listening to you, they sort of swivel like little satellite dishes. <laughs> um, Derek in particular, if you call his name and he doesn't want to come to you, he, you'll see his ears go. So he's heard you say it, but he's like, no, I'm not in the mood for this today. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so something I absolutely love about donkeys are their big wibbly lips and their big teeth. <laughs> How do they use them to eat? So donkeys' teeth are constantly growing, which is the same as horses. So they have to eat a lot of hard roughage and nice fibrous materials and grind that down with their teeth and it keeps their teeth nice and short. So what the little donkeys are doing at the moment is they're picking through all the fresh wood chip that we've put in the paddock recently. We put it in to help their hooves stay nice and clean and dry, but they obviously get to eat all the greenery and the bark that's left on it. Um, and they use their lips, their wibbly lips, to sort of feel where all the vegetation is. And if you feed them by hand, you can see their lips wobbling around. <laughs> So sometimes when people draw donkeys, they often draw these little blocks at the end of the legs for the hooves. But I know that uh, donkeys are quite delicate with their feet, aren't they? Yes, they are. So um, we have to take very good care of our donkey's feet. They don't necessarily like unfamiliar surfaces. So if a donkey lives most of its life in a paddock with grass or dirt or like wood chip like here, they might not be very familiar with concrete and it might scare them a little bit at first. So we had to work with our miniature donkeys when we first got them to make sure they were comfortable with that kind of thing. Um, every night when they go up for their dinner, we give them a good brush and then their hooves get cleaned as well because donkeys don't show pain very often. They are a prey species. So they have to make sure that other animals aren't aware that they're suffering. So if a donkey has something wrong with its hoof, it could be a very long time before you notice there's anything wrong. Well, they all look super happy here <laughs> on the farm. I know that they have a really lovely life with you. I'm really looking forward to drawing them. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed learning about donkeys on the farm. I'm now going to show you how to draw a donkey and the reference image I'm using is one taken from the footage that we filmed on the farm. That's coming up later so you can choose your own reference image and take a screenshot to work from. It's important to think about what kind of portrait you want to create. So I had a little go, these are a few that I made earlier, um, and I had a little sketch of the donkey's face, um, but also I had a go at drawing the full donkey. And that's what I'm gonna teach you today. So we get all of the hind legs and the tail and the ears, the, the whole donkey. So I've got a lovely screenshot here of Derek standing proud in the middle of his field. And that's what we're gonna work from today. So the materials that I'm gonna be working with today are super simple. I've got two pencils, one's a 2B, one's a 4B, and I find that those two softnesses work really well for getting both the details and the shading. Also an eraser, the eraser is your friend. <laughs> um, and I've got a pencil sharpener to keep the pencils nice and sharp, and also some paper. But you can work along in whatever materials that you like to use or that you have to hand. Even a biro on the back of an envelope will do. So let's get cracking. So I always begin every drawing by breaking my subject matter down into a series of simple lines and shapes and then building it up on the page. With uh, Derek here, I'm gonna start with a circle for his head and that circle will denote the, sh the shape and the size of the rest of the donkey. So um, I wanna make sure it fits on my paper. So something a bit like that. Keep your lines nice and light. We want to be able to rub out these sketch marks later. The next line I'm going to put in is um, 
the spine line. So all mammals have a spine line running from just about their nose all the way down to the tip of their tail. And that line is really good to put in because it really sort of, it means that you can use it as a measuring tool to understand the rest of the proportions of the donkey. So I'm going to use my circle here and start to run this line all the way down the neck. Just a little bump for the shoulders there and the little dip in the donkey's back up round the uh, fairly pert bottom <laughs> and then we've got the tail coming out here. The next thing I want to do is pick out the muscle structure. So donkeys are actually really strong as we learnt and they um, have a lot of muscles around their shoulders and on their hind legs so they've also got a lovely big round belly so we want to pick out them with a, a variety of sort of different sized ovals and circles. So here's one for the structure of the bottom <laughs> and here's one for the, the rounded belly, something like this. And then we've got a slightly longer and thinner one here, and that is for the, the front legs and the chest. And just making sure that it all matches up in, in proportion-wise with the head. To make sure everything is in proportion in your drawing, it's a good idea to keep measuring. So on my reference image, I'm now understanding that from nose to shoulder is the same width as shoulder to bottom. So I want to make sure that that is the same on my drawing as well, just before we go any further. Nose to shoulder, shoulder to bottom. Just about right, so it's just a good way to cross-reference your proportions to make sure they're correct. So now it's time to do the legs. And I measured that the legs, the length of the legs, is the same length as the shoulder to the top of the spine. So we can use that measurement then to understand the length of our legs and make a note on your, make a mark on your drawing to understand the length. So now you've got the length of your legs. Another shape to look at is actually the lovely square um, from the front legs down the ground, up the back legs and the back. So you've got a lovely sort of square here that you can work to and that will sort of show you where the, the legs are coming out from the body. And so you want to just start by using this um, little bit of a, the, the bottom circle here and just take a line down just so you know where our legs are here. And the same here for the front leg, following that muscle structure that we've put down, down here to where the hooves will be. And we'll, we'll go into more detail later with that. The next thing we want to look at is the face in a little bit more detail and we have our facial circle here but obviously the donkey's uh, nose is much longer so we can start to fill out this little bit underneath the chin here and bring that round to meet the original line that you created with your spine line. Then what we can start to do is use that sort of under the chin area to bring that line down to meet the donkey's chest here. So you're starting to work with a, a full outline. We can bring that down this line here and that's the second leg, the front leg that's furthest away. And then round here for the belly, big old belly. <laughs> and then same again here, start to bring that line down here starting to look like a donkey. <laughs> so now we're going back to the face and we want to put in a few more of those facial features and those amazing ears. So the first angle I'm going to look at is the angle of Derek's nose here and when you're trying to find an angle of, of anything in a drawing I use a little bit of a cheat technique. I call it the clock face technique and basically you, where you want to draw your line from turn that base point into a clock face and then you can understand at what time your line is coming out. It does only work with straight lines but it is really useful. So I'm start, my line is coming from the donkey's forehead so I'm turning the forehead line into a clock face and I think okay we've got 12, 3, it's about the angle is about half past six, seven o'clock so if I think about what's that so we've got 12, 3, six, 
about yeah about half past seven that's looking like a correct angle so we're all good we're all good there so when we get down to the nose I need, I'll show you another good trick we want to make sure that again our proportions are right but also that everything is on the right line so what I mean by that is the line technique <laughs> so when you're uh, in on your reference image you can draw a, a horizontal or vertical line all the way from a point on your drawing and then follow it across the rest of the subject matter and everything that line hits on your reference image it should be hitting on your drawing okay so I'm draw I'm sort of imaginary line coming back from the nose here I can see that it's hitting the top of the shoulder I can see it's hitting where the back leg meets the um, bottom and I can see that it's here hitting that little sort of corner edge on the very back of the donkey so I am confident that my nose is in the right place so we can go ahead and donkeys have got these lovely um, rounded sort of rubbery nostrils um, really quite big and flared and then they've got these amazing big lips as well big wibbly lips so um, be quite generous when you're drawing the um, the lips of the the donkey and make sure you've got that lovely bottom lip in there as well and you can start to bring that lovely big jawline back around here and because Derek's got a slightly darker kind of patch around his mouth and nose, we can start to just add a tiny bit of shading in there. Something else to include in is the lovely little patch. So where the hair gets a little bit shorter around the nose, that's a kind of key donkey characteristic, so always pop that in. Now we're going to put the eye in and I always say if you can't see a lot of the eye don't try and shoehorn it in because it will look a little bit strange but donkeys have these big soulful eyes and I can sort of see Derek's peeking out from under his fringe of uh, mane so we'll try and pop a little bit of it in. Again we can use our line method to make sure that it's all right and so I can line it up with the bottom lip here and it's sort of level with the back so maybe you even need to be a little bit further down. Again, the rubber is your friend. <laughs> and now we're going to move up to these magnificent ears here. And the donkey's ears are always bigger than you think. And again, we can use that line, uh, the clock face technique, sorry, to figure out the angle. And so we already have our clock face here, helpfully. And so I'm thinking it's sort of nine it's looking at about half past ten I'd say this ear so we can use that technique to get our angle and then a big sort of rounded fluffy ear here he looks very alert his ears are facing forward and the same here for the second ear pop this in and at this point as well you can take out any of your sketch lines that are you know confusing you a little bit um, it's good to have a nice clean canvas when you're adding in extra details now our head is looking much more donkey like we're going to start to graduate down to the rest of the body we're just sort of adding a few strands of this mane in here We've got a fantastically Beautiful, well-styled donkey mane has Derek. And we can start to fill out our lines, make them a bit more structurally sound. And we're going to start by coming again down the back here and just giving our outlines a bit more oomph. There we go. And so as we start to have a look at the legs, Pay real attention to your reference image. We want to make sure the joint structure is right, but we also want to have a look at the difference between the front legs and the hind legs. The hind legs have uh, almost like a backwards knee, so the angle is very different. The front legs are a bit easier, they're straight up and down. And then we'll get to the hooves, which is the really tricky bit. <laughs> so we're going to start by bringing Derek's chest out slightly more here 
He's a big donkey, we want to fill him out a little bit. He looks a bit skinny here at the moment. And again, we can use our line method to make sure we've got our legs coming in the right place. A good tip is that you can line up the bump for the shoulder blades and that should be the direct line coming down for your legs. So, so when we're looking at the legs, have a real look at the joint structure. We can notice that the knee is pretty much equidistant between the hoof and the shoulder. So again, we can use that measurement to really help. And what I find really helpful is to um, actually almost put a little little circle in where the knee joint is so you know where it is and you can then shape the leg around it. A nice thick knee joint there. And then the leg thins back down again for the delicate fetlock and hoof area at the bottom. So for the fetlocks, the, the, the leg almost flares out and then becomes very thin just before the hoof. And then we'll draw the second front leg. Make sure there's a good bit of chest for your donkey in between those two front legs. And the knees will be, the bulges will be in the same place. But then we can see a tiny bit of light peeking through between the legs. There we go, and it flares out at the end. Just before the hoof. So when you get down to the hooves, make sure you look at the angle at which they meet the ground and make sure you've got that lovely roundedness of them. They're not just those blocks that we were talking about. Nice and rounded. Okay, now we'll head down the furry belly. So at this point, again, you can start to take out any lines that you don't feel are quite right. And, and I often like to use my pencil marks to emulate the fur. Um, so I'm always using my pencil in the same direction as the fur. And often that way you can break up your outline and make your drawing more interesting. Something like this. And then we get to our back legs and again we want to make them a little bit more shapely so I'm going to bring this line down here and I can see that the the knee joint is just about on the same level so we can add that little circle in there to make sure we know where that joint structure is and then a little bit of a kick back out here and then down to those delicate hooves again. Same the other side, although the angle at which I'm looking at Derek's hind leg, it does look straighter than it actually is. And then we'll draw the second hind leg in, which a little bit more interesting behind there. And then down for the hoof. Good idea to keep your pencil nice and sharp when you're doing the outlines. And then again, nice and rounded for the hooves there.
Great. And then let's not forget the lovely tail. And Derek's here is just sort of beautifully blowing in the breeze so we can have fun with some marks here. Again, always using my pencil in the same direction as the hairs are going. And at this point, we just have a little cross check of everything. You've got all of your outlines in at the moment, so let's just make sure everything is in the right place and then we can get on with some shading. So once you're happy, now it's time to do some shading. Now I'm going to go for my slightly softer pencil for this, 4B, so I can get lots of lovely depth. When you're starting to shade your subject matter, it's a good idea to have a little look at where your light's coming from. So in the reference uh, image here, I can see that obviously the light is coming down from the sky. Um, so the top of Derek's back is catching the, the light um, and the darker parts will be underneath his belly, his legs, underneath his chin, those kind of areas. So keep that in mind when you're shading. So we're going to start by picking out some of the areas um, where Derek is at his darkest. So I'm going to start here on the neck. So again, as I'm shading, I'm, I'm also creating texture. So I'm using my pencil, as we said, always in the same direction as the fur is going. And I'm building up lots and lots of repetitive lines. And as you go, you can start to build up, you know, a little bit more of Derek's character and personality. So you can fill in the eyes a little more. You can give him this magnificent fringe that he's got going on. And fill in the ears as well. There's lots of fluff inside the donkey ears, which is quite nice to draw. And also the position of them uh, gives him a bit of personality as well. So at this point, you can just have a little bit of fun with it, really. Experiment with your mark making. Don't forget the whiskers. Donkeys have lots of whiskers. <laughs> and as you start getting into the shading, you'll notice that your pencil is capable of a variety of tones. And sometimes I like to draw myself in a little tonal scale. And what I mean by that is this. So on the side of my paper, I'll do a little area of shading where I'm pressing down really hard and the, I'm, I'm going as dark as the pencil is capable of. And then the next little bit I'll do a slightly lighter one. And then after that, slightly lighter still. So we're going now through just the grey scales and I'm just adjusting the pressure that I'm applying to the paper each time until we go all the way down to the white of the paper. I think drawings that have all of these tones in create a real sense of drama and it makes you want to look at the drawing. So if you're drawing Derek the donkey with me, you can see that he has actually a little stripe of white uh, which is running underneath his belly and, and goes onto his legs. 
At that point, you can use the white of the paper to show that area. So don't, don't shade too much in that area to make sure you can um, show his markings as well as his areas of light and dark. Another good thing to remember is that you don't have to draw every single strand of hair. You know, the brain is clever and if you do a few little marks here and there to show the texture, then you, you know, people will understand that that texture extends to that whole space. So don't worry about overdoing it. And sometimes I feel as you're drawing your animals, you do feel like you get to know them a little bit. I certainly appreciate donkeys much more after I've drawn them. So it's often this part when I get to shading that I find myself really calm and I'm really focused on what I'm doing. Drawing is a really mindful activity anyway and actually um, when you're doing it, it accesses the same part of your brain um, as when you're meditating, so there must be something good in it. If you want to shade a big area, sometimes what I do is I turn my pencil on the side and it gives you a sort of a slightly different tone, covers more ground. It's sometimes kind of nice to have a variation in your pencil marks. Once you've done the majority of your shading, you can pick up your harder pencil, the 2B, um, and start to go in a little bit more with the details. So things like the finer hairs, again with the whiskers, and just pick out your outlines so they're a little bit neater. So I think my drawing of Derek is almost there. It's important not to overwork your drawing, so if you're pretty happy with it, step away, have a look. It might not need any more. But there are a few finishing touches that you might want to add. And we want to make sure our donkey looks like he is on the ground, you know, there's gravity there. So I always find it's really helpful to add a little bit of sort of shading, just a little something to show that our donkey is stood on the ground here. And so I'm using my pencil again on the side, just adding a few kind of lines here, just to show the ground so Derek isn't floating in midair. And you can also add a few, you know, bits of lines to show some grass, some of the wood chip here maybe, you know. Just give him a little context. A 
Other than that, if you're happy, you should sign it like a true artist. And there we go. So you've seen me have a go, now it's your turn. Take a look through the following footage of the donkeys. You can pause or take a screenshot at a point that you like and that will be your reference image for your drawing. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed Drawing Donkeys with me. I'd absolutely love to see any of the artworks that you've created, so do share them, and details to do that are on the website. I'll see you next time. <laughs>